So I was born in uh, New Jersey, northern New Jersey, Tenafly. It's outside of New York. And uh, my parents were pretty political. So, I mean, I remember going out on my little scooter when I was about six, maybe, four, or probably five, I guess, since it was the 68 election and, uh, and campaigning for McCarthy, Eugene McCarthy, with my mother, not really knowing what I was doing, but happy to be on the scooter. My first political act was uh, coming home from kindergarten. I told my brother, who was 10 years older than me, that the, we were required to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And he said, you know, John, you don't have to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, there's a war going on. Uh, and so there are, people are protesting the war. So you don't have to stand. So the next day, dutifully, I went back to kindergarten, and when it was time to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, I didn't stand. And the teacher said, John, why aren't you standing? And I said, uh, because there's a war going on. And she said, uh, well, where, what war are you talking about? And I said, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and she said, well, it's fine for you to protest, but it's usually a good idea for you to find out why you're protesting. <laughs> and I was just devastated. And uh, I didn't do any political activism for the next 10 years. But it was a valuable lesson in, you know, getting your facts before you actually start talking. So uh, I became involved in a lot of different political actions in college in particular. It was the time of the anti-apartheid movement and the Central America Solidarity Movement. So I was very much involved in those. But at the same time, I was studying Russian. And so I had very good uh, uh, preparation and, and kind of what was going on in the Soviet Union and in communist countries. So I, I kind of went back and forth between you know, my work on the left uh, and then being very cognizant of you know, uh, what was often a, a critique of the left, of being too kind of soft on what was going on in the Soviet Union. And I think that those two experiences of left activism and understanding of, of what was going on in Eastern Europe and Soviet Union ha has profoundly you know, impacted uh, my, my uh, trajectory, if you will. And of course, you know, over the last 30 years, I've kind of divided my time between working on human rights and other issues in, in Eastern Europe and the former Soviet Union and doing kind of activism mostly in, in Asia, in East Asia, around the Korean Peninsula. So it's kind of an interesting continuation of, of, the, of the same kinds of concerns I had when I was in high school and college. My mission in life really is to, to uh, well, it would be twofold. One would be to write really powerful, engaging uh, uh, books, novels, plays. Um, and the second would be to make the world a better place, however incrementally that happens. Um, ideally, the two missions intersect, and what I write does do that. but. You know, sometimes I feel like I go back and forth between the hands-on activism work in which you meet with people and you're meeting constantly and you're strategizing and you're doing actions. And the more contemplative, which would be the writing side, sitting behind a desk and, and writing things. Uh, when I'm writing, you know, I'm thinking, ah, I really should be doing something. When I'm doing something, I'm thinking, I really should be thinking more about this and getting my thoughts on paper. It can be difficult to, to do both at the same time, but I like going back and forth between the two.